that wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, and our secret sins are in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that has told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. <coughs> Precious Lord, take my hand. that stage. Let us resign ourselves to the will of the supreme bosses of the universe, here making our final rights to this our departed brother. Brother, keep a record of seals. You will read the memorial. Brother William Cecil Short began his life with Omega Psi Phi fraternity on December 13, 1958, as an undergraduate at Maryland State College, now known as the University of Maryland, East of Shore, through the Pi Epsilon chapter. He was number three on the line of three with his line brothers, brothers Gerald Briscoe and Floyd Brothers. During his time at Pi Epsilon Chapter, Brother Short served as boss from 1958 to 1960. Up until the time of his death, <laughs> Brother Short was a loyal and faithful member of Tar Lambda Lambda, a graduate chapter in Southern Maryland. He served as the parliamentarian since 2007 and was nomination committee chair until 2016. Brother Short was also a delegate for the chapter in 2012 at the 78th Grand Conclave in Indianapolis, Minnesota. Brother Short was recognized as a national and international educator, administrator, consultant, and speaker. He was widely known as a visionary and dynamic leader within the educational field. In addition to the numerous awards and accolades Brother Short received in the educational field, he also received many chapter awards. In 2005, Brother Short was recognized as a founder stand-in, standing in for our beloved founder, Professor Frank Coleman. In 2006, Brother Short received the Founders Award, which is awarded to the brother who exhibits the highest ideals of Omega's four cardinal principles, manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. In 2010, Brother Short received the Bossler's Award. In 2011, he was recognized as Co-Omega Man of the Year. He received his 50th pin at the, 19, at the 75th Conclave in Birmingham, Alabama. And if his health would have permitted him, he would have received his 60th pin at the 2008 conclave in New Orleans, Louisiana. The chapter also recognized Brother Short in 2008, naming his 501c3 foundation after him and Brother John Lancaster. Brother Short entered Omega Chapter on December 24, 2019. 
Brother Short will be missed, and his imprint on Tar Lambda Lambda will be remembered for years. Brothers, you have heard the record of our departed brother. He has been a shining light in the bright crown of Omega. The radiance of his star will shine a guiding ray to many who will come after him to seek the light that is Omega. The members of our fraternity are bound inseparably by a chain of friendship and brotherhood that makes the joy of one the joy of all, that makes the sorrow of a brother a common lot. We share the burdens, toils, and cares of every one of us. We also share the happiness and pleasures, our hopes and dreams, our very life. This camaraderie, my brother, extends even to and beyond the grave. Neither height nor depth, nor walls, however high or wide, can fall the deep desire of us all to be at peace with those our brothers in whatever state they be. Brothers, give ear to our chaplain who will speak. <clears throat> Brothers, in this solemn hour, our hearts and minds of others who knew our departed brother are heavy with sorrow. <clears throat> the silent shadow of death has again visited our mega forest of life and fell one of our sturdy trees. But we do not sorrow as men without hope. The manner in which we live influences our attitudes towards death. We are instructed that manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift shall be the rules of life by which we live. He who has lived a manly life is well prepared to face death. To be manly is to live a life of high principles, to have a goal, and to be courageous in attaining of that goal. The steadfast adherence to so noble a concept, difficult though it may be, must, if necessity, be of estimable value in the development of sterling character. To be a man may be well mean to be a martyr to a cause, but to end of martyrdom is that one has lived, not as a craving coward, but as those glorious men who have left behind to mankind a record written in the blood of sacrifice, a record to be read by many who will come after. If we have lived as men, it cannot be but that we <coughs> will die as men. When die, we must. To be his brother's keeper should be the aim of every man. Unselfish living is a rare and precious gem to be sought by all mankind. Not what we have, but what we give is a worthy standard for men who would uplift the race of men. We must reach down and lift our fellow men so that they, too, will stand as men of pride, character, for all the world to see. This is the light Omega demands of all her sons. Brothers, let us not merely wipe away the tear that falls for him. Let us... <laughs> Here, resolve with God's grace that we shall continue to hold aloft the banner of Omega as nobly as he, our departed brother. In so doing, we may be assured that the life we now memorize will serve as a beacon of, to guide some other persons into that life which is circumscribed by Omega's cardinal principles. Let us pray. <coughs> Thou, O God, knowest our down-sitting and our uprisings, and understandest our thoughts afar off. Shield and defend us from all evil thoughts and intentions. Support us under the trials and afflictions which are destined to endure. While traveling through this veil of tears, man is born of a woman, is of a few days, and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. Since his days are determined and the number of his months is with thee, and thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass, look away from him and desist, that he may enjoy like an airling his day. For there is hope for a tree if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, 
and that his roots will not cease. But man dies and is laid low. Man breathes his last breath, and where he is, as water falls from the lake, and the river wastes away and dries up, so man lies down and rises not again, till the heavens are no more. He will not awake or be roused out of his sleep. Yet, O Lord, have compassion on the children of thy creation. Administer them comfort in time of trouble. Save them with everlasting salvation. O God, the supreme bossless of the universe, the creator, the sustainer, and the last repose of all mankind, we commend to thee thy eternal keeping of the soul of our departed brother. We know that in thy love and mercy he may find the confidence and rest that all men seek. We commend him to thee as into the hands of a loving father who careth for his children. Remember him, O Lord, according to the favor that thou bearest to all thy people. Grant that, increasing in knowledge and of love to thee, he may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God of peace be brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, and in the blood of the everlasting covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let the keeper of the record of the seals, would you conduct the roll call? Brother Nelson Wilkinson, High Salon, Spring, 1962. Brother Emil Cromwell, Pi Epsilon, Fall 1962. Present. Brother Eric Moby Brown, Pi Epsilon, 1977. Present. Brother Bruce Washington, Pi Epsilon, 1981. Present. Brother Doug Foster, Pi Epsilon, 1989. Present. Brother William Cecil Short. Brother William Cecil Short. Brother William Cecil Short. Brothers, all things are now well and fitly accomplished. I hereby instruct the keeper of records and seals to strike from the roll of Tar Lambda Lambda chapter of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. The name of Brother William Cecil Short. And commend to the Supreme Keeper of Records seal to this attorney throughout all eternity that he has inscribed our departed brother's name <coughs> on the rolls of Omega chapter. Well, it should furnish light and adornment an even greater degree than here on earth. When we wear the gloves, by Brother Carver A. Portlock. When we wear the gloves, a brother has gone from our midst and sailed to golden shores. When we wear the gloves, a friend has passed the final test and walks through purple doors. The circle has an empty place. A voice will raise no more. The song of fellowship and love uplift forevermore when we wear the gloves. When we wear the gloves, a light goes from this earthly life. The visor closed again. Yet all of heavens open wide to let a new star in. When we wear the gloves, a brother leaves a chapter's rose and moves to other worlds. For when we say our last goodbye, he walks on streets of pearls when we wear the gloves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Tar Lambda Lambda Chapter 7 Maryland, for that amazing ceremony in tribute to our very own William Cecil Short. On behalf of the family, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your presence tonight. What an awesome tribute to our own William Cecil Short. <coughs> joy, joy, God's great joy. Joy, joy, down in my soul. Sweet, beautiful, soul-saving joy. Joy, joy in my soul. You know, there is joy in our tears. And we, as Christians, we do not grieve as everyone else. But we realize that Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And what greater model to have here with us to keep us in comfort, give us the solace that we need to get through the transitioning of a loved one. So I just want to remind you, I came by to say, keep it in perspective, because Cecil, our beloved Cecil, would not let us, want us to grieve too long. 
And so within the context of, yes, a sorrowful part at the passing of Cecil, we want to keep in mind that we have great joy, for we know that when he's left this place, he's entered a much better home that we can all be grateful for because we are believers that way. We're going to celebrate how Cecil became the man the rest of the journey. You heard some of his journey as a frat brother, a dedicated frat brother, uh, through the ceremony, but you'll be hearing much more. We're gonna take the, the prayer that you heard from the Ta Lambda Lambda chapter as our opening prayer for this evening. And we're going to move along then through the journey the student, starting with the student, in the journey of Cecil. According to Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. And so we would like at this time, if you were a student of William Cecil Short, to stand right now. Stand if you were a student. Look around you. These are some of the students that have come near and far. Let's give them a hand for their travels to be here today. All right. And then we would like to celebrate if um, you are a teacher, a teacher of Cecil's or a, a teacher, period. Can you all stand, please? We'd like to celebrate you because that's something that he would want. If you are a teacher, yes. thank you for being here tonight. And I see that the deacon has come. And if you will come forward, this is Deacon John Barnes. God bless you. <coughs> together in the class of 1957 from Bell Alton High School. I remember Cecil when he came to Bell Alton. He was just a, just a friendly, jolly, outgoing person. He made friends easily. He was funny and fun to be with. And he was smart 
in high school, all of the accolades that his fraternity has talked about him receiving, Cecil really started very young putting together that wonderful career that he has. There were so many things that he was involved in in high school. He was the president of the student council, the judge on the student court standing there with Jane and the yearbook, <laughs> captain of the football, football team, and so on. Among his 1957 graduating class, Cecil was recognized as being one of the most likable, most athletic, and that he was. He was dubbed as one with assets so many. If we found faults, we can't find them. And his gregorious smile was always present. Since I'm going to be speaking on behalf of the class of 1957, I would like for all of the members who are here, <coughs> if you would stand, and I'd just like to leave you with some brief, brief thoughts of our hero, William Cecil Shaw. Can you sit back some members here, class of 1957? say, but how many were sorry when he passed away? In the words of Martin Luther, every man must do two things alone. He must do his own believing, and he must do his own dying. We have to, we have no doubt that our hero Caesar did both of those, and we pray that he is at peace at this time. Amen. The hero. And now we've talked about him being a student. You heard about it from his classmate. This is Teresa Wallace Johnson. And now, along his journey as a musician. And so is Mr. Virgil Peter Williams and Darius Stanton here with us. Come on then. We'd like to hear from you. Reflections from the musician. Uh, 
was Cars Beach in Annapolis, Maryland. And we was on the bulletin board with a young lady there, but I can't remember her name. It's been so long. <laughs> but anyway, from the time that I joined them, I stayed with them for about 10 years. And we also went to different places. We had a, a, a trip from Maryland to Virginia to the North Carolina border. And we played up in the mountains down there just before you got into North Carolina. And we came back home, coming back up the road. We uh, stopped on the side of the road and had a little snack and whatnot and enjoyed one another and had a good time. So this is my experience with the jungle. And the name of the fellow that was in the, in the, in the organization, in the band, was uh, Freddie Smith, uh, uh, Wesley Johnson, Cecil Short, James Short, Austin Brown, and Ed Lewis Brown, which is Austin's brother. So, and Cecil Chase, yeah, I don't, definitely don't want to be <laughs> Definitely don't want to be Because Cecil Chase and I and Austin, we did a lot of singing in, in the group. <laughs> Cecil Chase, I checked him. <coughs> man was dynamite. He was dynamite. And that's no joke. He definitely was. But as of tonight, I'm the only member that's left of the group. Yeah, but like I say, back in the day, we had good times. We went to different places. If there was a, a mix-up in something, during the intermission time, Cecil would get us together and say, look, fellas, this ain't no time to mess around. <laughs> we got to get in here and do things right. <laughs> came back from the mission, they got themselves together and they walked. <laughs> and they, they, they really played. Ain't no joke about it. And wherever we was booked to play, if it was from 8 to 12 or 9 to 1, it seemed like to me the place would be crowded with people before we got there. Because they had heard so much talk about it. Now. And like I say, I enjoyed my time with them. I really did. And I really missed the fellas because we had such a good time. And lo and behold, they are staying. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. For in the first Samuel, it says, uh, So it can be about whenever the evil spirit of God came to Saul, David would take the harp and play it, and Saul would be refreshed. So there's music in the church, huh? My God, my God, that's amazing. And now we have Mr. Darius Stanton. Did I have that right? Okay, you go for it. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor and a blessing. Can everyone say peace and love? Peace and love. One more time, peace, peace and love. Peace and love. So, as she said, my name is Darius A. Stanton, and I am so honored. Um, Ms. Short, thank you. God bless you and your family, your sons and daughters, um, all the family for, you know, allowing me to just to share. Uh, I am a host of two talk shows. One is called Peace in the Morning. I was Darius A. Stanton's broadcast live Friday mornings on Facebook, and the other one is called Good News Booty, which is broadcast throughout the entire Prince George's County every morning at 8.30 in the morning. I was fortunate enough to host a show um, this past summer, which was the Summer Soul Funk Festival, 
And, you know, Mr. Short was not just, a, as you heard, a crammer in school, but he was also a jammer. Right. And um, I was truly elated. And I want to thank Dad with the Patterson. Is she here? Yes. There she is. The, the funk delegate. Please stand up. <laughs> there she is. So we put this event together with an organization called DC and Entertainment. And this festival drew almost 3,000 people. And we had to wait a long time, and Mr. Short was there, and his family was so patient. But we were able to sit down and interview him. And I'm from Annapolis, Maryland, so my grandmother danced at Cars Beach, at Sparrow's Beach. And, you know, so I know very well. I wasn't there, uh, but I know very well all about it. And, you know, just to know that he played with some people like, you know, Fats Domino, you know, and just to be able to grace the stage. But we. James Brown, you know, I mean, just think of that, right? These are marvels. Um, he was the leader of the Principals Association. And I, I want to just highlight three things. The first is just the importance of, you know, when you see men come together, it is so powerful. Let's give those men a big round. And so, you know, the, the manhood that he spoke of, just in his life. But secondly, you know, the form in terms of education and how important education was in the model that he set, you know, as a man, an African-American man in education, and a leader, not just, an, you know, an, an average man, but a, a leader at a national level. And then lastly, but not least, the arts. You know, in China, they, you're required to play the arts from kindergarten all the way, there's no kindergarten, but from first grade all the way through grade school. You, it's mandatory. And so it's so important, you know, this was a saxophone. It's one of my favorite, my favorite instrument, I guess, next to the xylophone. And he, and, you know, he, he studied it, he played it, he mastered it to be able to play at the level that he did. Some people are able to, not able to master anything in life. He mastered multiple things. And I just want us to really think about as we work to create men like Mr. Short, who are Renaissance men who were really, you know, on the level of, of greatness. You don't have to say anybody else's name, because you could just say, Mr. Short. Right. So we don't have to say Paul Robeson, who was, we know as a Renaissance man. But Mr. Short was a Renaissance man. And so it's an honor and a privilege to come before you and just share what I thought was an honor for me. And I'll be sharing the videos that we did in the interviews with the family, and we'll, you know, allow you to see it, you know, that they so choose to broadcast it another time. But I just want us to understand the importance of manhood, and let's continue to model that. Of course, you know how important education is, but the arts, because music sues our souls. Music bridges, builds bridges. And it's important that it also helps the right brain talk to the left brain. And that's why in China, it's a, in Asia, it's, it's such a huge thing, because they understand the connection between the right and the left brain and how music unlocks those doors for math and science. So thank you, family. God bless you. You're doing a wonderful job. Have a wonderful evening. Does everyone say peace and love? Peace and love. Thank you very much. Peace and love. Renaissance man. Hmm. We are going to see so short. Renaissance man. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for that. College classmate. We're going through the journey, folks, from student to High school classmate, musician, now the college classmate is Mr. Alvin Marbury, Stephen Proctor, and DeWitt Moore. Will be present. Please come forward. You are. Okay. That's all right. We know he went to college. Yeah. All right. We know he excelled, right? Okay. And if they come in, that'll be fine. We'll hear from them. And right now, we're going to continue right on with our journey. And so, the teacher and coach. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpening iron. Iron sharpens iron. And so we're delighted to have with us teacher coach. Mr. Short was his teacher, was his coach, was his mentor, and you'll hear all about it from our own national coach, Mr. Tubby Smith. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Well, what an honor, what a privilege 
when we could have this opportunity just to say a few words about a man that meant as much to me as my dad did. And when I look back, he was a veteran. My dad was a World War II veteran. But Mr. Short, Coach Short, was a math teacher at George Washington Carpenter in 1965. And um, I was 14 years old. He was, uh, not only was he a math teacher, but he was assistant basketball coach. He coached the JV team. And he saw me playing at lunchtime. Steve Hawkins is back there. Another, we've, been, we've been neighbors and childhood friends for every married friend. See a lucky guy. <laughs> but uh, but he, he saw us playing basketball at lunchtime. You know, that's before schools were consolidated. The last year that we were going to Great Mills High School, I mean, so before we left to go to Great Mills High School, but George Washington Carver was the black school, African American school in the lower part of St. Mary's County. And he saw us playing basketball, pick up basketball. He said, he asked me, he said, why don't you you're coming out for the basketball team? And I said, well, you know, I'm, I've got work to do at home. I'm from a family of 17. <laughs> Twelve girls and five boys, and my oldest brother Smitty. So you might know Humphrey Smith Jr. Same as I know he knew uh, Mr. Short extremely well, and I just left his home today, and he wanted me to send his blessings and, and to the family and everyone. But uh, Smitty was ten years old, my one was, and so there were four girls in between. So I'm the oldest boy at home, and I had work to do on the farm. So Mr. Short said, look, I, I said, I wish you would talk to my dad. Because yeah, I love to play basketball and play sports. But I had chores to do. He showed up that afternoon at the school bus. My dad was a school bus contractor, school bus driver. He called my dad off the bus. I was concerned that I had done something wrong in school <laughs> in his math class or something. But he told me he was going to do it. But that's the, and he came off the, my dad got off the bus. I don't know what he said to my dad, but when he got back on the bus, my dad was driving, and I was sitting behind him and said, are you any good at basketball, boy? <laughs> you want to play basketball? I said, yes, sir. But that's the kind of man Cecil Short was. And it was all about, he was such a classy, well-dressed, and I, everyone wanted to emulate him. I mean, he was classy. He dressed well, spoke well, heck of an athlete. And so we wanted to be like him. 14 years old. But that's the butterfly effect that you can have on people. And so the influence that he had when my dad allowed me to play basketball, JV basketball, I wish I'd played for him longer. Halfway through the season, they moved me up to the varsity. So, so we played a, year, a half a year together. And I was very blessed that he taught me the skills and, and the fundamentals of the game. But also he taught me about life. And just in that short period of time, his, uh, the image, his, uh, his philosophy of life, just listening to them as I reminisce. And they used to come to games. In fact, Last time, I guess he was at a game, was over at the Naval Academy. We were playing. I was at the University of Memphis, and he came by. But when I was at Kentucky, he came by, Memphis, Minnesota. So we've stayed in touch. And I, whenever I talk, I always talk about the influence and the impact that Coach Short had on me and so many young people. And then I, you know, I went off and taught school. That was my image. I wanted to teach and coach. I wanted to. Just like him, I'll be honest with you. And, uh, and so that's the image that I've, and the perception that I've tried, the image I've tried to emulate all these years. That's a long time. 14 years old, now I'm 68. It's, so I've been very blessed to have had that opportunity. And he saw something in me. And that was uh, of value. And, and you don't, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And Mr. Short, Cecil Short, Coach Short was that way. I mean, I can 
I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of all the students, athletes, teachers, and people that he came in contact with. Certainly, it's, again, it's truly a privilege for me to be here today and tonight. I was wondering whether I could come into Charles County. And I used to beat up on us quite a bit when he was at Lackey's. <laughs> I ended up playing football. He, play, he coached at Choptica, and I know some folks back there that he coached as well at Lackey High School. So he could, and he could beat you with, I just say he could beat you with, he could take his and, and beat yours and then he could take yours and then beat you with his one. And he did it at Choptica, and he came back and beat Great Mills. They left Chapter Con with the lackey and going lackey back and beat Great Mills and Chapter Con. <laughs> that's, that's the talent that he had, the leadership and the qualities that he had. But again, thank you. We're here to celebrate a wonderful life. And uh, again, thank you all. I know he's thinking of us. Appreciate it. Good night. <laughs> Descriptions tonight. Amazing. Amazing man. Uh, we go on on our journey. The principal, Cecil, William Cecil Short, as principal, some of the students, uh, is the Honorable Reuben Collins, president of Charles County Commission. Is he here with us? Very good. Uh, the principal, teacher, and co worker. Coach Larry Johnson and the Reverend Cynthia Baker, please come forward. She's a pastor at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Good evening. Good evening. What an honor to be here tonight in a very special way. Tubby and Mr. Uh, Coach uh, Short must have wrote the same speech for Tubby he wrote for me. He <laughs> said the same thing so, that I said. I'm very blessed and very fortunate, had an opportunity to call him my hero. I've only had two heroes. That's my dad, the Caesar Shore. I stand before you, had an opportunity to work with a great man, a profound impact, not only just in athletics, but in education. I don't think, and there's a lot of people here tonight that know Caesar. He has some great things to say about it. But I'm very blessed to be here to tell you my journey, my start, and what he did for me. I was a young guy, man, just, just young, wetted behind the ears, got cut by the Washington Redskins. And I needed a job. And I got a guy by the name of Herman Boone, who just passed recently, he was my high school coach. He called, he said, I have a friend in Charles County, and his name is Cecil Short. And he said, I'm going to call him for you, Larry, and I want you to go down and meet him. I did. I put my little suit and tie on, went down to like the ice cream. I'll never forget this day. I saw a guy, when I walked in the room, I thought I walked in the presence of God. Because he looked at me, and he's got his gray smile, right? He's got a gray smile. And he smiled. He said, sit down, son. And I was scared to death. <laughs> And we talked, and he didn't talk anything about a job. He didn't talk about me coaching or teaching. He just asked me, tell me about who you are. Tell me about what you want to do in life. When I walked out, I said, well, I didn't get that job. <laughs> no, I didn't get that job. Two hours later, he called me. He said, Larry, I want to hire you. I said, I don't have a job for you here at Lackey High School, but we'll find you somewhere. And he did. And then when he took an opportunity to take over the McDonald High School, he called me to his office again. He said, I'm taking you with me to be the head football coach. I said, Coach, I ain't never been a head football coach. I have no idea what I'm going to do. But he was a visionary. He saw things and people that you didn't see in yourself. I stand here today in the present to tell you that where I stand today and what I'm doing today it's because of Caesar Shore. Because you need some people to lift you up as you go up the way. You need somebody who can really take you in and care about you. He did. He was like a father to me. And Keith called me uh, 
four or five days ago. I was driving to pull the side of the road. And he says, call him. And he tried so hard. And then I got on this plane and fly to uh, Timbuktu, I think it was, Arizona. <laughs> and that Wednesday he had passed away. In 1983, we won our state first state championship. There was two guys standing on the field. There's my dad and Cecil Shore. And he said to me, my dad hugged me and said, congratulations. And he would say this to me all the time. And he would say, Larry, I'm so proud of you. He said, Larry, I'm so proud of you. And he hugged and cried. Then he gave me an opportunity to coach his family. Tanya, great right track. <laughs> Keith, running right back. I couldn't get Kevin. I tried to get him. <laughs> I just couldn't get him. But I'm just here to tell you tonight, this is a beautiful wife. Always have been. You, you were like the, the star mother of every mother I could see. You were in. The class and the dignity you carry yourself. And, and, and Coach Ring is right. We all dress like that. Yeah. We all want to be just like Cecil Short. Because he set the bar for how it's supposed to be. As a man, as a father, as a husband, as a granddad, and most important, as a friend. I don't, I, I, said, I, I don't think I would ever be in another place in my life that has such impact, people impact my life. I was nobody. And guess what? He took a shot on me. He took a chance on me. He gave me an opportunity to move forward in my life. And I'm just talking about Cesar Short, without your dad, I would not be the Larry Johnson. I had a great father. But your dad took over me. He wrote me when he left to go to the to the to the state department of education. I said, Coach, can you write me a reference letter just in case I get to move on? I still have that same letter in my drawer right now. And in the letter, it challenged me. He, he was so good at changing words to make you feel like you were better than you really were. You know what I'm talking about? He could set you down and make you feel like you were Superman, even though you didn't have the cake. But it made you feel that way. In this letter, he said three things. He says, a temporary teacher, a master teacher. And he wasn't writing that for me. He was challenging. And every time I, I take that one letter, I don't have a one that I use, and it's Cecil Short. And every time I take that one resume, that letter out, Keith, and I give it to people, say, here's my reference. Here's your dad. And he read that letter. And it says everything about who he wanted me to be. I stand here today proud to have an opportunity that your dad, your husband, was part of my life. And there was nothing I could give you but share memories of what he did for me. And I'm quite sure there's other people in this room who said the same thing, that what he's done for you guys. Somewhere I hope one day there's a statue in Charles County that says, Cecil Short. Because that's the impact, profound impact. <laughs> and here, my challenge is if I get to go to glory, I want to be his coach in him. Because <laughs> I know I'm in better hands. I know I am. I love you guys. And I love your dad so much. You have no idea what he's done for me. And there was times in college you would call and say, Hey, Larry. I can hear that voice today. <laughs> hey, Larry. I'm so proud of you, boy. And I'll never forget that. And those are the moments that kept me encouraged. Because I knew the guy in Charles County still loved me. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. And thank you guys for taking me in to be a part of your family. God bless you. Amen.
was my um, department chairperson at Laplata High School. And she talked about Mr. Short all the time, so I felt like I was as proud of him as she was. And as time passed, he actually came to Laplata High School as principal. And I was excited because it was like, my brother was coming too. And um, when he got there, he made it very clear who he was and his purpose for being there. And I was excited about that. But I thought I was teacher. I, I was the teacher who had it going on, that my kids loved me and my community loved me, and it would be well. But I found out that Mr. Short wanted more from me. And I thank God for that because he really worked me, and he got out much more from me than I thought I had. And so I'm really appreciative to him for that. Um, he was an outstanding administrator. He was an outstanding mentor. He was one that hung in there with us. He worked hard with us and for us, and he loved our children. And so I fell in love with Mr. Short all over again. But the, the thing about the, what I want to really share tonight is that two years after he came, the first two years for me were really hard because he again, he put pressure on me. And then it was okay. But, you know, sometimes we think just because we know people, we think we know them, that they're going to be easy on us and they like us the way we look. But it didn't work like that. And like I said, he really pushed me. And so I'm appreciative I can stand here today because when you called me today, I was excited because I can bring my little type that says Teacher of the Year, Cynthia Warren, and W.C. the Short Principal of the High School, June 1991. That means a lot. That's why I still have this. I, when I went from one school to the other as an administrator, I would take this with me because it reminded me of what Mr. Schwett put in me and what he expected. His expectations were very high. I grew up in the South. Larry didn't tell me, but we actually came from the same college. He's much older than I. <laughs> 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 Sure. You've always been my mentor as well and my friend. Thank you for this opportunity to share. One last thing I want to say is that Mr. Short really helped to shape and mold the call of God on my life. When he came to the play to high school, he actually started having a service before our commencement exercises, the baccalaureate service. And it gave, he would ask me every year to say a prayer. And it was wonderful because it gave me an opportunity to pray over all of the students at La Plata. What an honor that was because God calls me. And for him to recognize that call, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So one day, not too many years ago, I was uh, in an uh, evening with uh, some other educators. And Mr. Bloom was there. Mr. Bloom was one of the former superintendents of the schools. And he came to me, I went up to, to him, and he said, oh, yeah, I remember you. You were the one at Laplata High School that used to pray in the name of Jesus. And I told you all, though, well, Mr. Short, let me pray in the name of Jesus. He never said anything. For, for, so for some of you, it may, not, it may not mean a lot. But for me and for other born-again spirit-filled believers, it meant so much that we could pray over our kids in public school. And no one, and Mr. Short never said anything, he let me do that over and over again, and so I am forever grateful because he helped me to, to fulfill the call of God in my life. Thank you for your time. You can just see the potential in everybody. Invincible, incomparable, unstoppable, undefeated. Wow, he was the Invictus man. We've heard it time and time again through everyone who's here. And now for the politician. The politician, we have Delegate Edith Patterson and Sen Senator Thomas McMillan. Is he here as well? Oh, fabulous, coming forward. Isaiah, first chapter, 17 verse says, learn to do what <coughs> is right. Seek justice, defend the oppressed. And now we're hearing what the politicians do. <coughs> that role. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm Edith Patterson, and uh, I'm a politician, but more importantly, I'm a friend. My deal, Cecil and Jane. I usually combine the two, Cecil and Jane, Jane and Cecil. And I, I just, I'm so relieved to hear some of the comments that I wanted to say about him. And if you if you read the Maryland Independent, you will see what I said, because he is such a great 
role model. And I'm saying it in the present because his impact does not go with him in his transition. Impact he's made should live within all of our hearts and our commitment. And my comments are really for the grandchildren because sometimes so you don't know what the grandparents have done, etc. But I simply want to say to you, I met uh, the short Jane and Cecil in 1974 when, when my husband was a new administrator in Charles County. We'd never heard of Charles County, but we did make friends with the shorts. And although Cecil mentored uh, young people, he also mentored, uh, well, Ralph was about 40, 40 year olds uh, at the time as well. Why? Because he too felt the need to support others who were in this field. He really, why am I telling you this? You already know. He loved students. Now, as a politician, uh, I'm sort of selfish. I tried to find someone who would be a good campaign manager, and he is, he was my campaign manager until the present. Um, it was really important to have someone with integrity. He has integrity, he has all the essentials that we need in the political arena. He did it without hesitation, and so um, in terms of why I feel it's so important that Darius was here to do the interview. He also received an award from the Congressional Black Caucus in Washington, D.C. because of his leadership. And again, we recognize him uh, today. And Delegate Davis is here before we present the citation. But certainly, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, he was a phenomenal, <coughs> phenomenal individual. And most of all, he was my friend. Amen. If I could just be brief and speak to how Jane and Cecil have, been, have affected my life. Um, I, Jane and Cecil have known my family for, for decades. Yes. Um, when I uh, moved to uh, Charles County, um, I was told I need to go talk to Cecil if I thought I was going to run for office. And <laughs> If I thought I was going to run. And when the first thing he said was, do you know what you're getting yourself into? And after I said no and sat there looking like a deer in the headlights, he sat down and talked to me about humility and about courage. And when I left that meeting, I knew I would, um, I would be successful. And so I want to let you know that he was very influential in politics also. Um, as I enter my 10th year as an elected official, thank you all. Um, <laughs> I will never forget those words and the support uh, that he gave me and just how, and, and the phone calls that he's made since then, um, giving me encouragement. He'd read something in the paper and said, yeah, you know, I heard about this, and we talk about it. And it was just very uplifting, always. So thank you. Thank you to the entire family and to to all that sincere sympathy is extended to the family of William Cecil Short, phenomenal national educator and leader, a devoted and insightful member of our county and state who made a tremendous impact to benefit all mankind by serving as a committed role model for all generations. Hold on to all the wonderful memories you share together and is presented on this day on behalf of the Charles County delegation, again it's myself, Edith Patterson, Delegate Deborah Davis, Delegate Susie Proctor, and Delegate C.T. Wilson. Um, also, Senator Ben Cardin will send his, his, um, his condolences, and you will be getting a letter. And we have a Maryland state flag for the family. Thank you very much. Lady Jane, thank you very much for the honor and the privilege to present uh, the citation from Congressman Hoyer. He's not here. I can never fill his shoes. Um, I'm sure some of you will, are wishing that I just read the citation and sit down and see how it's getting late. <laughs> but since it says it's an hour of reflection, let me reflect on the Cecil Short. And before I do, I want you to know, Darius, uh, I'm not good with a, a xylophone or saxophone, but after 32 years, I've got pretty good, I think, with a microphone. <laughs> but, uh, Larry, I want you to know, I thought I was the 
person that came from the largest family, I'm one of 14, seven boys and seven girls, to know that there's somebody that's 17, 16, 17, is quite remarkable. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, what an impact that Cecil Short made on my life. And uh, Edith and I just came from another viewing, John Bloom, his name was mentioned tonight. And uh, the reporters called me and I thought, my gosh, what an incredible time this is when you have two incredible pillars of education and beyond that came through the system together that ended up leaving this life together. It's just, so it's, it's important to reflect on how these two men, the similarities and the differences. The similarities here, you have a white student born and raised in Charles County in Indian Head. You have an African-American student that came through a segregated system here in Charles County that appreciated loved education and wanted to be educators themselves. They left, they got their degree in teaching, and they chose to come back to Charles County. And what a difference that they made. You know, they dedicated their lives to Charles County. They stayed in Charles County. They rose through the ranks. And when they ended their educational career and then moved on to other things, you had the superintendent of school and the assistant superintendent of school standing there together. What a remarkable, remarkable person. But I want to tell you about my association with Cecil Short. I knew him from afar. I was reading the papers. You know, the wonderful job that he did as a principal, as coaching. I decided to run in 1986. And uh, I chose as my campaign treasurer a young white fellow by the name of Tom Seremet, who just so happened to be the vice vice uh, principal at De La Plata High School. And he said to me, Matt, you have to meet Cecil Short. You have to meet Cecil Short. And that's when I got to really, really and truly know Cecil Short. All the accolades that have been given to him tonight, I would just want to talk about the leadership that he displayed, leadership and education. But, you know, I guess the true mark of a leader is how the followers judge him. To have somebody at a time when we'd gone through segregation, back in the integration, and you have an African-American principal and you have two white white principals that work so closely together that just adored each other. They worked together so close. That's the leadership. That's leadership. Charles County was very, very torn, and it took people like Cecil Short to really and truly pull things together. Regardless of race, he helped pull them together. Um, he talked to me a lot of times um, about, Mac, what do you want to do in politics? What do you want to do? You care about education, how do you want to do it? And in many, a many times we sat and talked about issues, about things that occurred. I was down a little bit that, you know, I held up the judgeships for uh, three nominees going to the circuit court judge because there wasn't a single African-American candidate that was set up. and. Uh, and I held up the nomination until the district court judge, they, they, they sent up the names of the district court judge, and I got a lot of flack from a lot of the white lawyers in, uh, in Charles County, and I went and I spoke to Cecil. And Cecil said, Mac, you did the, the right thing. You stood up for what we need to do in Charles County. You're the top elected official from Charles County. You have to, do, to, to provide the leadership and make sure that justice is served. Those were just words that I could always go. When I needed somebody to talk to, I'd go to Cecil Short. The last conversation that I had with him, I regret that it was a while ago, was when he was at the Charles County uh, Rehab Center with dialysis. And uh, we sat there for about a half hour just talking about things, uh, things that had happened, things that had passed, that we'd done together. He was such an incredible, incredible leader. And uh, uh, he's been described by many, many things tonight um, I know that his star, the sky is open, the star is out there, he's going to guide us. But uh, I want to just leave the word that uh, he was a true pillar <coughs> here in Charles County. He served his citizens well. So on behalf of, uh, of uh, the folks like me, um, we just can't express our appreciation enough. So now I'm going to get on with what I was here for, sent here for, and that's going to do the citation from Steady Hoyer. And I can never stand in the shoes of Steady Warning, but if he were here, he would say, he would probably talk as if he was 100% Democrat, 
all the work that Cecil Shield did for the Democrat Party. He was the first African-American chairman of the Democrat Central Committee here in Charles County. He mentored, he supported so many candidates over his many years involved in that. And, uh, and he was a real, real leader. And I know that Steady would be one of the first to thank him for that. So without further ado, and with your permission, let me read this letter from Steady Hoy to the family of Wayne Cecil Short. It is with heartfelt sympathy that I offer my condolences on the loss of a giant and a public, and, and public servant, Mr. William Cecil Short. We have gathered here today to celebrate the life and legacy of an educator and community leader. Cecil was a loving husband to his high school sweetheart, Mary Jane Short, a dynamic father to four children, grandfather to 10 grandchildren, great grandfather, and a friend to us all in South Carolina. <coughs> his rich passion for giving back to the community generated a lifelong career in public service. Today we recognize his service on a state and national level in which he served in the United States Army as a defender of our nation. Throughout his career, he was an educator and mentor to students throughout Prince George's County and Charles County, Maryland. Those who knew him could attest to his passion for the people. He contributed to various organizations as he served <coughs> by leadership as a former chair of Charles County's Democrat Central Committee and recognized as the first African-American principal in the state of Maryland to receive the National Milliken Foundation Award in 1993. As we mourn, let us continue to honor the legacy of excellence that Cecil left behind. He was a beloved and active member of Omega Phi Sci-Fi Fraternity, Inc., which he joined in 1958. He also served in the Tau Lambda Lambda chapter of Southern Maryland and was the parliamentarian and political action chairman. His sportsmanship captivated the hearts of many and changed the lives of those who he touched throughout his career. To the Short family, thank you for sharing Cecil with us and for the sacrifices you made over the years to support his mission to serve. Mary Jane Short, please know that my thoughts and prayers are with you as you head from the life change, from this life-changing loss. As you continue to press through the season of pain and grief, remember through the pain of today will bring an unforeseen joy of tomorrow. Be sure to rejoice knowing that he was truly an honorable man that left a mark throughout Maryland and the nation. May his memory inspire us all to be more selfless, more involved, and to tap into a desire to serve something bigger than ourselves. May God be with you in this time of sorrow, and may you find comfort and peace in the memories he left behind and shared with you. With sympathy and regret, I am sincerely yours, Steady H. Shorty. Moving to now, we've started with the student, to the high school classmate, to the musician, to the college <coughs> classmate, to the teacher and coach, to the principal, the students, the principal, the teacher and co-workers, the politician, and now we have three who are represented by the community. We have Southern Maryland Chain Chapter, the Lynx Incorporated, please come forward. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated New Zeta Omega Chapter, please come forward. And then we have a representative from the NAACP. If all three of you would come forward, please, we'd greatly appreciate it. Keeping in mind the time constraints as well. Southern Maryland Chain Chapter of the Links Incorporated, Resolution Connecting Link, William Cecil Short. Whereas throughout the 72 year history of the Links Incorporated, the founders, Sarah Strickland Scott and Margaret Brazell Hawkins, envisioned a service oriented organization that, that would have a threefold purpose to promote, to promote civic, 
educational, and cultural concerns. Whereas the Lynx Incorporated consists of nearly 15,000 professional women of color and 288 chapters located in 41 states, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and the United Kingdom have partnered with people of goodwill and good deeds, carrying out the values of friendship, integrity, honesty, service, commitment, family relationships, courage, and respect for self and others. <coughs> Whereas the members of the Southern Maryland Chain Chapter, the Lynx Incorporated, vow our undying friendship and unconditional love and support to the family of our dearly departed connecting link, William Cecil Shore. Whereas the members of the Southern Maryland Chain Chapter, the Lynx Incorporated, offer prayers and our deepest sympathy to member Link Mary Jane Short, giving reassurance that God is love, God is truth, and God rules with justice, power, and mercy. Whereas the members of the Southern Maryland <coughs> Chapter, the Lynx Incorporated, pray for our era links, Kevin, Tanya, Keith, and Renee, as they continue their father's legacy and cultivate the spirit of their father's <coughs> wisdom and goodness. Now therefore be it resolved, that the Southern Maryland Chain Chapter, the Lynx Incorporated, commemorates Connecting Link William Cecil Short on this third day of January, 2020, presented with sisterly love by the membership and hand of the president of the Southern Maryland Chain Chapter, the Lynx Incorporated, Janelle Adams Lincoln's president. well-lived life. There's healing and remembering. There's hope in knowing love goes on forever. Good evening. Good evening. Will all members of News 8 Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority <coughs> please stand. And all other members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority please stand. Cecil Short was the man, a true friend of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, New Zeta Omega Chapter. No offense to anyone else here tonight, but Cecil was a true pink and green man. <laughs> After all, the love of his life, Jane, is a member of the sorority as well as his daughter and his granddaughter, and so forth, and so forth. So he really didn't have a choice in the matter. Seriously though, for over 40 years, Cecil consistently supported our chapter, physically, financially, and socially. For this, we are ever so thankful. Because Cecil understood the purpose of Greek life, that is, to build community by serving it, he developed a passion for his fraternity, our sorority, and all Greek life. After all, his entire life was one of service, service as we know it, to all mankind. Cecil was a trailblazer, a visionary, a problem solver, a team player, a organizer, and everything he seemed to do, he did it well because his motivation was to build community. William Cecil Short. How did he do, William Cecil Short? Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, New Zealand Omega Chapter, Salute you, the man, a true friend of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, New Zealand Mega Chapter. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Diotha Sweat. I am the president of the Charles County AACP, and I have past president, Mr. William Braxton, here. 
uh, to stand uh, to uh, pay tribute to Mr. Uh, Short. I am probably the only person that is going to stand before you tonight that did not uh, personally know Mr. Cecil, but I knew him from afar. I knew him from Miss uh, Cecilia Spinks, and I uh, worked with her on a committee when I was the vice president, and <coughs> she talked about her brother so much that I felt like I knew the man myself. <laughs> but she spoke of him in such a way that when I had to uh, go and do a little research because I didn't want to come and just give a lot of empty words, I wanted to, for them to be heartfelt, I, I said, oh my God, this man gave us the blueprint of what we should be doing in this new decade. This gentleman lived through segregation. Okay, we talk about all his accolades, but let's talk about it. He was born in 1932, excuse me, 39, when we could not come through the front door. When he, he went through a segregated school. But he always had that smile. Because I remember when I actually met him, I didn't meet him, but I was in the same space with him. It was the night that uh, his fraternity uh, awarded him, uh, had a, a recognition for him, and um, <coughs> the NAACP provided him with his lifetime uh, membership plaque that night. And uh, I remember how uh, Miss Jane and Mr. Cecil, it was just so wonderful to watch. Um, they were just sitting there just dancing. And uh, I just had to pull my phone out and take a picture. Because it was just so surreal to watch that. Because he was he was sick at the time, and I remember he had uh, he he was able to get there and strong willpower and to and to still be the man. And so I saw that in him, and even in his, in the midst of his sickness, he still was able to just be just so kind and so gracious. And so I thought it uh, be. Uh, an honor to come tonight to uh, provide a citation to the family on behalf of the Charles County NAACP. Before I do that, I would like to let uh, Mr. William Braxton say a few words. Short and sweet. <laughs> Thank you, family, for sharing the season with Charles County. Thank you so much for all that he done. I, I will never forget. He will stay in my memory forever. God bless you. And I also would like to uh, uh, state that we did recognize Mr. Cecil Short uh, last year as one of our trailblazers for the branch. We had a black history program, and we did honor him for his work here in Charles County. The official citation reads as such, be it known to all on behalf of the members of the Charles County NAACP that sincerest condolences and sympathies are offered to the family of life member and supporter, Mr. W. <coughs> Cecil Short, an acknowledgement of his passing on December 24, 2019, and recognition of his dedication and service to our community as a trailblazing advocate in the field of education and civil, civic engagement. We are grateful for the example, along with the valuable assistance and support he has provided to Charles County NAACP. His kind spirit and generous heart contributed significantly to the overall success of the branch in our community. May God's richest blessings be upon his family and friends, Charles County Branch, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Diotha R. Sweat, President. the Honorable Reuben Collins, President of Charles County Commissioners, to please come forward. Good evening. How's everyone? Good evening. And I first want to start off by offering my sincere condolences to the family. Um, <coughs> I don't think you can fully appreciate um, the level of emotion that I have uh, coming here this evening. As 
because um, Mr. William Cecil Short, and I, I said this, and I, and I said it very sincerely, was one of the greatest men that I've ever had the opportunity to be around in my entire life. Because more than anyone else, other than my parents, he was always someone that recognized that he was a mentor to many young people like myself. And he did that, and he expressed that to anyone that had the privilege and opportunity to be exposed to this brilliant man. And so I wanted to start off with that. And I also wanted to let you know, I had several things going on this evening, and it was my intention to be at the funeral tomorrow. And when I talked to my dear sister, Ms. Short, and she asked me to be here, I did everything in my power to be here as soon as I could. I know this has been a long program, but I, I ask for your uh, sincere uh, willingness to give me an opportunity to express what I feel about this great man. <clears throat> because during the course of your life, you don't have a lot of opportunities to really express appreciation to people that absolutely impact you as an individual. And when I thought about how I would express my feelings about this man, I started thinking about a conversation I had with him when I was first elected as a county commissioner. And as only Cecil Short can put it in context, he told me with his stern voice the importance and the and the challenge that you have in being a leader. And I understood every single word that this man expressed to me. So I appreciate you giving me this moment. I'm here because I wanted to offer a special um, offer of condolences coming from Charles County government. So I will read that at this time. And it's from the County Commissioners of Charles County. And it's offered uh, to the family, specifically. It is with our deepest sympathy that we offer condolences to the family of W. Cecil Short. We honor his positive impact on the community. He quickly embraced as his own his tireless work and invaluable contributions demonstrate a remarkable life of service, leadership, generosity, and selfishness that was duly recognized by all. <coughs> he was dearly loved, and he will be terribly missed. May memories comfort you and bring you, the family specifically, peace. <laughs> presented on this third day of January 2020 by the Board of County Commissioners, Reuben Collins, President, Bobby Rucci, Vice President, Gilbert Bowling, Thomasina Coates, and Amanda Stewart. And it's presented to the family. God bless you. Thank you. All right, we will have the final words from the family. The family man, Ms. Gloria Porter, cousin, Dr. Tonja Short Ringel, daughter, the brother-in-law, Reverend Dr. Francis Leon Briscoe, followed by closing prayer. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, it's certainly a privilege and an honor to stand before all of you. Cecil was my first cousin. His father and my mother were brother and sister. 
And it's always interesting when you go to uh, a service, an occasion like this, and you know you're in the right place when everyone keeps saying the same things. <laughs> and you say, yeah, that's the person that I knew. And certainly we've heard amazing things about a most remarkable man. But as I sat there and I was watching the pictures, I kept thinking about our grandparents. And I kept thinking about a farm in Pomfret, Maryland. And I thought, oh boy, if Granddaddy Short and Grandma Short and I just have to believe that up in heaven, they know what their grandson accomplished. Because it is truly amazing. You know, I, as I was listening, I thought, boy, he was a busy man. <laughs> how, how did he do all of those things in so many areas? And then a thought from the Bible came to me that says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He was anointed. He was called. Jeremiah 29 and 11 speaks about purpose and a plan for your life. And he had one for my cousin. And the same zeal and passion that you all have talked about that he had for education and for the community and for politics, he had it for his family. Uh, his aunts, Aunt Vi, Aunt B, my mother, Aunt Lillian, Aunt Hattie, he would call them, he would send them flowers, Occasions would be happening and he would say, come hang out with me in San Diego. I'm going to a conference. And we would go and we would have a wonderful time. He never forgot about his family, family reunions, family gatherings. He found time to be there because he recognized and placed a priority on that even with all of the other things that he was doing. And it was so much fun to uh, hang out with uh, Cecil. He was always an encouragement to me. And as everyone has said, he was GQ all the way. <laughs> Mr. Elegance. And he had Mrs. Elegance by his side <laughs> at all times. And they were just <coughs> extraordinary. And uh, he will be missed but he leaves such an amazing legacy. And you know, when someone has run their race and they've run it faithfully and masterfully and left behind all that he has left, in some ways it's, it's really hard to be sad. We're going to miss him, but he did what he was supposed to do. And now God is saying to him, you have been a faithful servant. Well done. Come on up higher and get a rest and see what I have in store for you. So our challenge is to live a life that will allow us to see him again. And uh, family know that we all loved Cousin Cecil. We were also very proud of him. And as many have said, we just thank you for that gift. And Jane, I want to say especially to you, you were such an amazing caregiver. You showed your husband such love and you did it with grace that you always have and the family is truly thankful for how you took care of our dear beloved
cousin. Just know that we shall miss him, but we all should just remember that to be absent from the body is to be present with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. classroom, there's the lesson and then you get the test. In life, you get the test and then you hope that you will learn the lesson. What dad always taught us, the family, is to be prepared. Always, because he would test the scene. <laughs> But he was always, you know, and you've said a lot about him, but to us, my brothers and sister and I, we were like in awe of him. It's like, what does he really do? Who is he? he knows everyone. <laughs> Even the president of the United States called him Mr. Short, you know. <laughs> One of the earlier memories we have of him just kind of getting it done, we were at McDonald's, and we wanted a Happy Meal toy, but we didn't order Happy Meals. And the lady said, well, you can't get a Happy Meal toy because they didn't order that. And Dad was like, miss, <laughs> my three children want this toy. <laughs> and immediately she was like, okay, which one, how many, how many? Do you <laughs> and we were like, isn't that neat, okay? <laughs> he could get things done. Another time, I remember I was much older and I was at work, he called me. And I must have had that voice. He said, Tanya Lynn, how you doing? I said, I'm all right. No, no, you're not. What's going on? And I was working with the credit union trying to get a loan, and they kept asking me for stuff, and it was becoming so bothersome. I'm like, they're just getting on my nerves. I don't know how I'm going to get this done. He said, which one? <laughs> and I told him, and then he said, okay, hang up. I do not exaggerate. In 10 minutes, he called me back. He said, I want you to go to the credit union. The president will meet you with a check in hand. <laughs> and when I walked in, they said, are you Mr. Short's daughter? <laughs> he got it done. But what he told us, you know, through all of this, we watched him amazingly. Whenever he got things done, it was not through the pain of others. So we all learn as his legacy, and those who know me know that I'm that type of person as well. I get it done, but you don't have to see how it's done. You just know it's done efficiently, with dispatch, and it's done well. And that's what he told us. And also to reach beyond, Coach Johnson, as you would say. He would throw the ball beyond your reach, and you just have to make that, you know, that stretch. And no matter how high we rose in whatever fields or whatever we do, always stay humble and true to yourself. That humility is what keeps us human. Being that servant leader, giving back of yourself, being that mentor, all of us do that. Whether it's coaching football, you know, taking on new vocalists, helping out folks in the neighborhood. We try to teach that to our children. Dad is no longer physically here, but he will live on in perpetuity because he has a deep legacy. And that you will see over and over and over again. You all have given such a beautiful tribute to our father, Gilbert's brother, the last sibling, Stan of Gilbert, that if I see you. My father's last sibling. We love him. So we're so happy and thankful. And Daddy, we love you. Thank you all. Reverend Dr. Francis Leon Briscoe. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm going to be quick. We need to go home. 
But I have to say this. According to the book of Ecclesiastes, the word of God says, the just will go back to the earth where the man was made from. And the spirit will go to heaven. Back to God. So we know where Cecil is. So let us pray. O oh, gracious, immortal, and loving God, <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, we ask that you be with this family, with all of my brothers and sisters, with Gilbert, and all of the friends that's here today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you for all that you've done for Cecil. Lord, we know that he has touched so many people and you have given him an immaculate life. In other words, Lord, we just thank you for Cecil. Lord, we just ask that you be with the family. We know that this is a time, it's a tough time, Lord. But strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them. Give them the power to endure this situation. And then, Lord, we just ask that you touch each and every soul as they travel the highway to go home, Lord. Touch them. Station your angels around their vehicles, Lord, to protect them as they travel home. And dear Lord, we just thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Prayer upon prayer, prayer upon prayer. We have to continue to pray. And so we're going to have a, another closing prayer added to that prayer from the Reverend Dr. Francis Leon Braun Briscoe. And we'll have the official closing prayer from Deacon Robert Martin. Thank you. Mary Jane, family, all of the words that have been said today I can surely echo and second because I've known Cecil since the early 1960s. I too was a graduate from Bell Alton High School in the year 1961. And indeed I would ask all of us here present as we prepare to leave tonight to keep the, the short family in your prayers for comfort and also pray for the goodwill of Cecil. So let us now begin to pray in. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, yes. you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all people might be saved and pass from death into a new life. Listen to our prayers. Look with love on your people who mourn and pray for our brother Cecil. Lord Jesus, holy and compassionate, forgive Cecil his sins. By dying, you open the gates of life for those who believe in you. Do not let our brother Cecil be parted from you, but by your glorious power, give him light, joy, and peace in heaven, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and so now, on behalf of the family, again, I want to thank you. And uh, we do wish that you have traveling mercy on your journeys home. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. Amen.